Hey folks, um, uh, this is a review for your Algebra 2 test on Chapter 4. So solving some quadratics, so you have some, um, uh, some imaginary numbers. You're going to solve some quadratic inequalities as well. So here we go. So here we, here we got this board problem. So this is from before, you guys, Chapter 3, solving a system of linear or, or of three equations with three unknowns. So um, there's several ways to do it. Um, I, to me, the first way to do that is, um, is I subtracted x from both sides on this equation. And on this one, I subtracted y from, I'm sorry, 3x from both sides right here. Actually, and I substituted that in for right there. I made this uh, y. Uh, because x equals uh, negative y, so I put in negative y right there. Okay, so that, that follow there? And then I subtract, I added this 3y, because this is negative 3y, so I added it over here, so z equals this. And then I'm going to substitute um, uh, this in for x right here, so I'm going to put in negative y right there. And then for the z right here, I'm going to put 10 plus 3y right there. And then that's going to get me one equation with uh, with uh, just uh, y's in there, okay? And I can solve this equation for y. So when I solve that equation for y, I get uh, I get negative 3. So uh, you get a final answer of 3, negative 3, uh, 1, okay? When you substitute that back in. So when I plug in... Um, Sorry, when I plug in negative 3 right there, negative negative 3 is positive 3, so x equals positive 3. And to get z, I'd plug in uh, y equals negative 3 right there, so I get uh, 10 minus 9, so z equals 1 right there, okay? All right, okay, let's go ahead. This is a review for your test on Chapter 4, so let's grab the function labeled vertex, axis, of symmetry, and, and all that. All right, all kinds of ways to graph this, you guys. I'm going to do the intercept method, you guys, which means factoring. And so when I factor, then my intercepts, uh, I set this factor equal to 0 and set this factor equal to 0. So my, my intercepts are here at 3 and 5 right there, okay? And then uh, my axis of symmetry is always right in the middle of these intercepts. So my axis of symmetry is at uh, uh, x equals 4, okay? So when I plug in x equals 4, I get y equals negative 1. So there's my vertex there, okay? Over 1, up 1 squared on both sides. Over 2, up 2 squared, which would be 4. So it would be a point right there and a point right there, okay? And then just go ahead and graph them, all right? There you go. Okay, and the axis of symmetry is this vertical line, x equals 4 right there, all right? All right, uh, let's try this one here, okay? This one is called the, the vertex method because the vertex is staring right at you, except we do opposite with this one, same with this one right here. So the vertex is at negative 2, 3, okay? This baby's going down because it's negative, so it goes over 1, down 1 squared on both sides. Over 2, down 2 squared, which is 4 on both sides, okay? So there you go, and there's my axis of symmetry at x equals negative 2. It always goes through the vertex. All right, let's try this one. Okay, this one, there is no bx, you guys, so my, my vertex is at 0, 3 right there. Okay, so when I do grab 0, 3, uh, there we go, and then this one's going down 2 times 1 squared, 2 times 2 squared. So when I go over 1, it goes down 2 times 1 squared, which is 2 on both sides. Go over 2, 2 squared is 4, but 2 times that. It's always this number times 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared. Okay, so that would be 8. Okay, and then go ahead and connect them up. My axis symmetry is right there at x equals 0. All right, let's try this guy, okay? This one I'm going to do x equals opposite b over 2a to get my x coordinate of my, uh, my vertex right there. Then I'm going to plug in x equals 2 to get my y coordinate. So when I plugged in x equals 2, I get uh, y equals negative 2. Okay, I know I'm going kind of fast, you guys, but you guys can certainly pause this, and this is a review, you guys, so hopefully you're pausing somewhere down over here in the left-hand corner. You can pause this thing, or actually, if you just click it, like right there where my cursor is, it'll pause it uh, also. All right, anyways, okay, so this one is opening up 2 times 1 squared, 2 times 2 squared, so over 1, up 2 on both sides, over 2... 2 squared is 4, but 2 times that would be up 8 on both sides. Okay, so there it goes right there. Axis of symmetry is x equals 2. All right, so let's solve each equation. Okay, so quadratic equations like this one, we have to make it equal to 0. So I added 32 to both sides, and I got 56. Factors of 56 that add to 15 are 8 and 7. Okay, set this factor equal to 0, and set this factor equal to 0, and I get negative 8 or negative 7. That's the answer, okay? Okay, this one also, I did this one in class the other day. This is one of your homework questions. So subtract 5 on both sides, okay? And then I go do what's called smiley face factoring. I suck at guessing and checking, you guys. So smiley face factoring really helps me. If I multiply these outer two numbers, 
45 times negative 4 equals negative 180. And then uh, factors of negative 180 that add to this are negative 3 times 60. You can do 60 times negative 3 if you want, but I'm going to put the negative 3 with the 45 and the 60 with the 4. So let's rewrite that. So there's that rewritten right there. Okay, and then uh, so there's my negative or there's my 57y. Then I'm going to factor by grouping. I'm going to GCF these two. GCF these two, so I'm going to put parentheses around those and, and factor out. I can pull a 3y out of that. When I pull a 3y out right there, I'm left with 15y minus 1. Now, if you're kind of confused, just imagine if I redistributed this 3y back through, I'd get 45y squared, and 3y times that would get me that right there. Okay, I can pull a 4 out of both of these, and then now they both have a common factor of 15y minus 1. So if I pull out the 15y minus 1s, I'm left with the blue stuff, 3y plus 4. Okay, now it's factored. Now I can set the factors equal to 0, and there you go. There's your answer right there. Alrighty? Okay, so here, this one, there's a couple ways to do this one. You can do um, uh, set it equal to 0 and factor. This is a difference of squares. Um, uh, when you get a difference of squares, then you have conjugate binomials, so 5b plus 4, 5b minus 4, it's the square root of this and this, one has a plus, one has a minus, and then set both those factors equal to zero, you get that right there. Over here, if I just divide it both sides by 25, I get b squared equals 16 over 25. When you square root that, just don't forget the, the plus or minus when you square root it. Whenever you have a quantity squared equals a number, you're going to always have a plus or minus. Okay, square root of 16 is 4, square root of 25 is 5. Either way is good with me, okay? All right, uh, this guy right here, okay, this one, factors of 22 that add to negative 12, I can't think of any, so I'm going to complete the square, you guys. Completing the square is nice if this is a 1x squared and that's an even number. Okay, so do you remember how to complete the square? Now, you don't have to. You can use a quadratic formula if you want. I, I don't like using a quadratic formula unless I absolutely have to. Completing the square, especially on this one, is really easy. So get rid of the 22. Put it on the other side, and it becomes a negative 22. Okay, and then we take half of 12, which is 6. 6 squared is the number that we add to both sides. So 6 squared is 36. I'm going to... I'm gonna, um, I'm going to uh, add 36 to both sides. Now this makes a perfect square trinomial. So here this becomes a binomial squared, x minus 6 squared. Okay, and this side becomes 14. Then we square root both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus, you guys. So you get uh, 6 plus or minus the square root of 14. Okay, you would get that also if you didn't make any mistakes using the quadratic formula. But boy, this is slick if you can do it. If, if that's even and that's 1 and I can't factor it, I'm going to use uh, completing the square. All right, find the zeros of the function, okay? When it says find the zeros, that just means set it equal to zero and solve, okay? Just means solve, okay? So now I'm going to solve. All right, let's see. Factors of uh, negative 15, when I multiply those, there's no factors of negative 15 that adds to 10. I wouldn't touch this on completing the squares unless somebody absolutely made me, you guys. I would. This one's totally ready for the quadratic formula, you guys. So here's the quadratic formula right here. Some negative boy could not decide on whether to go to a radical party or to B square and miss out on four awesome chicks. The party was over at 2 a.m. Okay? All right, so, uh, or you can do the Pop Goes a Weasel song, and I don't want to sing that because it gets stuck in my head, but go look at uh, my review on uh, section 4.8, which is the quadratic formula, and I sing it about four or five times in there, and ugh, it gets stuck in my head. Anyways, here we go. So if I plug it all in right, I get to that stage right there, uh, okay, just check your work, make sure you did it okay, and then uh, I'm not done, you guys. Two can go into all these outside numbers, and so I canceled them all down by two, and there's my answer right there. All right, okay, so graph this inequality. So I'm going to graph the parabola just like we did before, and then shade. We're going to shade, okay? So there's my parabola being graphed right there, okay? Sorry about my sloppiness. I had to do it with my index finger on my laptop right here. Okay, and then I'm going to test 0, 0. 0, 0 is outside. If 0, 0 makes it true, this inequality right here, then I'm going to shade the outside. If it makes it false, then I shade the inside, okay? So when I test 0, 0, it made it false, you guys. 0 is not greater than or equal to 12, so uh, I shade uh, inside the parabola because 0, 0 was on the outside of the parabola, okay? All right, let's try another one here. Let's graph the system of inequalities, okay? Okay, I did this one in class on uh, the last lesson, 4, 9, I believe. Okay, there's that one. It's a dotted parabola. 
and I tested 0, 0, 0, 0 made this a yes, so I'm going to shade inside this red guy right here, but I still got to grab this one, so I'll do this one in blue. Test 0, 0 again, so 0, 0 on this one also made this yes, and it's inside the blue one, so it's going to be where the red and blue interact with each other, and it's going to make it purple right there, okay? All right, and then I got a few more here, so simplify these, okay? All right, hopefully you're pausing, you guys. Okay, the square root of 48, got a prime factorized 48, and you get uh, four twos and a three, so two twos come out, so you get four root three. Okay, here, uh, I'm going to combine the three times 75 inside one radical, and then break it all down, and you should get 105. Okay, here, I don't like having fractions inside a radical, so I'm going to multiply this one by square root of seven over square root of seven, okay? Or just root seven, uh, square root of seven over seven. All right, that gets me two sevens on the inside, brings me one seven on the outside. Okay, here I'm going to distribute this negative 3i through, so negative 3i times 7, negative 3i times i is going to get me that right there. Don't forget, i squared equals negative 1, so this, this becomes, whoops, I made a mistake right here. No, I didn't. I'm good, right? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, okay, because it becomes a... Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, I sure did. I did too make a mistake. Okay, this is going to be a minus right here. Let me get rid of that. That is a minus uh, i squared, and so that's going to change this to a plus because, because i squared equals negative 1. All right, if you guys know me by now, and if you're watching this, you're probably one of my students. I make lots of mistakes, okay? All right, but if you don't, then my students will tell you. I like my, if you knew them, uh, I make all kinds of mistakes. Okay, here's this one here, you guys. Can't have a radical downstairs, so i got to do the conjugate trick. The conjugate of this guy is going to be 1 minus 2i over 1 minus 2i. And so when that happens, it's going to get me, I square when they're conjugates, it's just the first one squared minus the second one squared, and that gets rid of your radical. So 1 squared is 1, square root of 2 squared is just 2, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, and you can never leave the negative downstairs, you have to absorb it upstairs, so there's the answer right there. Okay, over here, I'm going to clean it up and do the same thing with the conjugate rule, okay? So there's this all cleaned up right there, and then I'm going to multiply this by 4 plus 3i over 4 plus 3i. Okay, and then we square 4i, square 3, and subtract them, 4i squared is 16i squared. I distributed this 3 through on top, and they get me that right there, 16i squared. Remember, i squared is negative 1, so this becomes negative 16. Negative 16 minus 9 is negative 25, and don't forget, the negative gets absorbed upstairs, so there it is right there. All right, I think I have a little bit more here, you guys. Oh, I don't, except for if you are in my class, this would be your assignment. Uh, it will be pages uh, 318 through 322. I've got company. My dogs are barking. The numbers 3 through uh, 43 odds. Numbers 3 through 43 odds. Take care, gang.